we're going to talk about like DevRel and social and making friends online and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I made this video and I was kind of like bemoaning the fact that like DevRel and Dev Education was kind of in this weird spot and people didn't really know how to package it and deal with it. And you wrote this really interesting tweet. Um, it says, in my opinion, the high value function of product content is building community, following around the product, which for developer products would be better served by devlog content rather than education, customer success content. Companies ask for education, but they really want cool friends. I know that both of you are in this realm right now where you're kind of like developing a community around TL Draw and excitement around TL Draw. So how do you think about this function in your business and what kind of like led you to write that? I had a bad experience trying to do community education content for a company called Framer. It was an education role that was also very public facing and community facing. And by the end of it, I, I felt like the education side of that ended up frustrating the people who were interested in this space uh, because I was trying to fit all of that community action and that, that content and like the, like you could do so many cool things with the product, but I, I was trying to like squeeze it through this like fairly narrow uh, tunnel of, of education, creating tutorials, creating guides, sure. creating et cetera. In, in a way, doing education for a product company felt like it was an impossible ask, that that wasn't really the ask. Um, and so for, for Teal Draw, from the very beginning, like, I had that, that kind of content muscle kind of worked, and, and I continued to do that and used this project and some of the ones that came before it uh, as a way of, like, experimenting with that content. Like, what can I do in order to, like, achieve actual goals without having to uh, do something that felt very high investment with a potential low outcome and that wasn't really clear that it was needed. You know what I mean? Like, it, like what, yeah. what does make sense? What would make sense for this type of problem? Y'all have been doing like really great stuff with Twitter where like literally it's just like sometimes gifts of like, yeah. hey, this is this is a cool feature. Uh, look at how cool this is. And then like people go off and then just repeat that, but like in their own mindset. W how do you describe that? All right, right. <laughs> I guess, right? Like that explosive community energy thing. I guess we actually talk about it quite a lot. It's hard sometimes when you're trying to put out content like that, right? Like yeah. I find it... I find it hard to put out content that that feels almost like low effort in a way, um, you know, because <laughs> sure, yeah, I think, you know, yeah. like, I get it. When you're putting out something you've made on the internet, you know, you want to sell it. You want to advertise it. Totally. Right? But, like, no one's interested in that, right? Like, no, no one wants to be sold to. Like, I think we were chatting earlier and you said about, you know, you scroll down some Twitter feeds or, like, LinkedIn or whatever, and there's, there's lots of adverts. People are trying to get you to do yeah. something. And mm -hmm. I think when we're putting out that kind of content, like we don't need them to buy something from us. We just need them to like us, right? We yeah, just need yeah. like so. So I find it hard when I when I make something cool, like say I'm messing around with an experiment and it surprises me. Like I I have to stop that initial like gut reaction to say like this is the most amazing thing to ever come out of London. You know, like, no one wants to hear that. No one wants that. It's rubbish. But they, the best thing to do is to just genuinely take my actual reaction and put it into a tweet. And, like, make it more human in a way, you know? So yeah. I think there was, like, one of the tweets was, like, I, I just, like, I wrote, I can't believe this works. Mm. Right? I can't believe this <laughs> yeah, works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that was my genuine reaction. And and so so it's kind of hard and it's kind of easy, but um, it's very <laughs> deliberate. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> kind of hard, kind of easy, very deliberate. And this is like maybe the best summation of like of all of this I've ever heard. No, no, it it is true though because it is it fe when it happens it feels like like magic because I'm sure that it, for as many times as you've done that you've maybe put something out there and it just kind of didn't get picked up. People didn't really care that much. And they're like, oh, it's cool that you're excited about that, but I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I mean, <laughs> the, first off, like before tech and design and, and any of this, like my background was in, in, in fine arts, right? And one of the things that my kind of generation of artists who I guess grew up on Facebook and social media, like, you mm -hmm. know, was new. One of the things that you we did a lot was just constantly be sharing work in progress. You know, there, there's a particular way of writing about your your work that was meant for an audience that, that wasn't artists, et cetera. Mm. Uh, and there was another way of talking about your work among other people who are 
were engaged in the same craft, in the same sort of like uh, work of the artist, right? Yeah. And I was always like, I love doing doing studio visits. I love having those conversations because they were, uh, yes, they were about the like the concepts behind your work and the meaning of the message and the, the work, but they were also a lot about like the craft of of the work mm-hmm. and the, you know like you have an hour conversation about like different inks and stuff like that. Um, and I think that when it comes to like any product, whether that is a, a developer tool or uh, an end user product, if you ask yourself like, w- what is the most interesting conversation that we could have about this product? Like if yeah. I wanted to tell someone about Tildra, is the most interesting thing that, that I could share with them, uh, here's the, the business case for Tildra, or here's how to use it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes, yeah, like that's important. Like some people would be interested in that. But especially if you're talking to other makers, other developers, other people who are engaged in this same process of making a technical tool that people, like, is usable and that solves all these problems and stuff, the most interesting content might be check out all these weird edge cases inside of this interaction <laughs> that seems easy yeah. once you figured it all out. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when you look at that, that early, especially the earlier kind of like uh, uh, Twitter content that, that sort of found, made the foundation, the cultural foundation for, for Tealdraw, it was that. How do stickies work? Or like, why do some apps let you rotate them and others don't? Yeah. Uh, should we? Like, you know, how does our arrow work when it's like a little arrow or you know, whatever? It, it ends up being product education uh, mm-hmm. and it ends up being like just generally interesting. Um, but the motivation is in the, the tone and so forth. It's much more like kind of crafts person. It's like shop talk. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, let me let me show you something. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and honestly, like when you have a product that is as visual as Sudra, like you get away with publishing that. Mm-hmm. Like it's all shit. Like shoot it, fuck it. Like, like, but I think that that attitude of like letting people in enough to see the parts of the project that are like really special and that are like worth talking about to the type of person you're talking about. Yeah. Like that. That's how you build a. Again, like not necessarily a community and not like a pipeline, but how you get cool friends. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like how do you get people to come over to your studio? Well, that's what I it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, uh, you know, you want to you want to be a good date. I don't know how to say it. Like, uh, you know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, if people are going to give you their time and their their attention and so forth, so. I guess that's how I'm thinking. So I, it's very different. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 I think about it the same way. Like, I think some of the, we use, like, some different words for it. Like, you say cool friends. Like, say community, you know. Yeah, but if yeah. you say date, I say, I don't know. But um, <laughs> sometimes I feel like, you know, like, I see how much hard work goes on from team members. Yeah. And, and I think it's sometimes, it would, it would be a shame to only show, like, the final stage mm. of that. You know, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. hey, we've been working for, like, 12 months on a new system or a new and you, you some i think some people think they can only show that when it's finished mm. and and it's and it doesn't seem right you know like there's so much hidden juice there right <laughs> yeah 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 like yeah, yeah. all like, of these bugs we fixed i think like yeah. um don't don't be ashamed of showing the bugs that you fix because like that's your hard work and i think like you say about like product education part of it is about Look how much hard work we put in. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. for us, it's a it's a special sort of like, it's especially aligned with the the company because yeah, whatever we make an SDK, we're ultimately our bigger biggest competitor is like someone just doing the stuff themselves. It, it really does like comments and other real time stuff, and it's like mm-hmm. you know, here's how to build comments, you know, and it's like a, a second person description of. Um, of here, you know, first, here's how you're going to do it. And then these are the problems that you're going to have and all this. And it just goes on for like 3000 words. And it has a great <laughs> effect of discouraging me from ever building a comment system, even though I'm going to build a comment system. Uh, because, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, that, I found that, you know, uh, I, I, would, I, I would probably have changed a few things in terms of tone, but like, uh, it, I feel like we do that naturally. Is that but, like by sharing that work in progress, it's also, uh, yeah, sharing the craft and the quality. I do think it's it's hard. It's like emotionally hard for some people online to do that, right? Because yeah. you have to show your half finished work. You have to show your bugs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and I think like once you get through that, then then things go better. And and I remember like before some of the make real, we had like a meeting the week before the make real stuff went viral, and you were like, 
telling me like people want to see the behind the scenes stuff you know like <laughs> go, tell, share your thinking you know i'm like oh i don't know i don't know so yeah well done. <laughs> thanks steve thanks steve <laughs> it was all me <laughs> well it's it, it's interesting because there's a tweet i i don't know if i could find it but like i is the CEO of Cloudflare, and they were talking about a transition in their content where they decided to, or they were speaking to future employees, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to talk in this way that it was like collaborative yeah. and like opening up the process and kind of that open source type of like mindset and vibe. You know, we, we talked about like this as like a function of product, but it almost feels like a function of like engineering as well, where you're kind of integrating people into that, uh, <laughs> like this is that, a, that a, thought a, process. It, it's a uh, it can be a, a, a risk to open up those type of um, mm -hmm. design questions early on, especially if they're like sort of like UX questions, because yeah, kind of also our job to make a choice on here's yeah. what we think is best. Uh, and the last, you know, of all committees, I would choose Twitter the last uh, to make my <laughs> my design by committee uh, choices. Um, even but even it's great even because below Reddit. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, okay, two things. First, yes, it's a great place to show work in progress content because yeah. like, you get ideas about constraints, especially like, oh, would that mm. work for this? You know, like, ah, yeah. damn, I hadn't even thought about that. And yeah. A lot of really good ideas have come out of those types of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, damn. Well, there it goes. Never mind. Oh, well. uh, the, uh... <laughs> Oh, now it's now it's even further away. Oh, oh sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Oh, we just sorry, pushed right. it. We pushed it. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Here's here's what it was. You can you can edit that. <laughs> yeah, the other uh, thing well. that I was gonna say uh, is that okay. Let's say you just finish a project uh, and now you want to promote it. You're starting from a place. Whatever. Now it's April and it's gonna take some time to get that out. And you're mm. only gonna have so many times of repeating. Hey, this is done. Check yeah. this out before people like burn out on that message. Whereas if you just share the fact that you're working on a problem, like that work in progress content also like is a huge promotion of like, hey, someone's working on this problem. Like they might not be done yet, but they're working on it. And you're able to tell that same story like dozens of times more than you could have if you just waited until it was over and then say, hey, we have new sticky notes. Uh, is that you're able to like be like, sticky notes are coming. Yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're yeah, doing yeah. the work on sticky notes. Like it's, it's happening. And uh, you know, I think Figma recently released this great, like multi selection box product uh, that that had come out, uh, and and Nico, the designer behind it, you know, was able to use the Twitter account for Figma to to share, you know, um, a uh, a Steve like thread. On, uh, <laughs> it's it's great. I, I'm so happy to, to to see it. But like, really, like that's sort of like, let me take you on a on a kind of a, a a deep dive into this problem. Not only like how it works, but like here here's why it was hard. Uh, and and uh, here are the things that we overcame in, in working on it. And it, it's a little bit like an engineering blog, but for kind of the UX design, it's awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah, like my only complaint was that you know, well, like, why am I only seeing this now? You know, like, <laughs> right. like you've been yeah, working yeah. On I know you've been working on this for six months. Like, uh, like I would have loved to be, uh, you know, see the ups and downs along the way. Yeah, I think yeah. not every product can do that for various mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, but if you're Especially if you're early and there are no rules and who cares? Mm -hmm. uh, what have you got like, to lose? Yeah. What have you got to gain? It's just such a good... <laughs> that type of visibility, it pays off in ways that are just hard to predict and hard to sort of like mm -hmm. roadmap. But, you know, yeah. it's, it's all good. I mean, that's the thing. Like when, when things happen, it's sometimes unexpected. Like you yeah. mentioned earlier about how, you know, when we put something out, maybe it explodes in a good way, maybe it just fizzles out, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and we... We've talked in the past about saying like if if every tweet does well, then we're then we're kind of not being experimental enough. We're not kind of, Interesting. We're kind of not yeah, yeah. Sure. pushing it hard enough. Like if you're only doing safe posts of content, then yeah. you're not gonna cut through or make make a mark, right? So like mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Like we have a tweet that fizzles out or backfires or something <laughs> every now and then, but then. One in a hundred or one in fifty or one in twenty will turn into like, hey, like we got Sam Altman fired or whatever. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, listen, there's some crazy theories out there. Yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> deny anything. But uh, the 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sam. I think a big component of this, and it, it does relate to to education also, and, and I'm sure, uh, Michael, you, you can you can sympathize with. Like educational content takes a ton of time to make. Like so doing much a work, good tutorial, yeah. and yeah. and then, and also like products change and the things you've recorded broke like i broke i like, had content break on me because like the product mm -hmm. changed underneath it uh like it's high investment of time uh and while that is really good for some things and i'm mm -hmm. very glad that there are high high quality tutorials out there you do not need a high quality tutorial in order to make cool friends um mm -hmm. and to, to tell a development story or anything like that like yeah honestly like the kind of like I don't think we're exactly a fire hose or a shotgun type of approach, but like mm -hmm. the reason why I kind of settled on Twitter gift threads so much early on was that like I can do this without dramatically changing the way that I build this product. Interesting. Like it can kind of be the chaff that that occurs like as I'm I'm doing the development. Yeah. And then yeah. I can share that and it'll it'll serve that as well. So it's a little bit like I don't know, like burning your wood dust to to warm your workshop yeah like yeah right? but yeah. you're gonna make it anyway like you yeah. might as well really like deploy it or something yeah brad brad frost has this really great concept that i've come to really enjoy he he calls it creative exhaust that he had to get into this pattern of sharing that creative exhaust where it's like you know he, he's always like kind of like working and pushing against this thing and there's this energy that just falls off of it naturally and mm -hmm. if you find a way to capture mm -hmm. that and share that yeah. Like that is audience building, community building, like friend friend gaining, <laughs> as we've repeated yeah. a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it is I, it I, is a hard skill because sometimes you you're exhausted from just doing the work. And you're like, oh, I don't even, I don't have time to talk about this with the people on Twitter today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can just uh, fucking just post post just post, post out like I have posted I have posted a gift of my own stuff every day for like. Five or six years now? Five or six Where? years? Well, I switched to Mastodon, so, mm. you know. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they're still posting on Twitter on Teal Draw. But, like, I feel like it fuels you more, right? Because you, you get mm. people... Um, okay, it's not about the likes. I would do it even without the like. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> no, but, like, I don't know. I would never have met Steve and come to work you here Twitter. If, if I didn't post every day, right? Like, I, yeah. I got a job here because... Steve saw a tweet, and we're both in London, right? And and here yeah. I am. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done any of this work if I wasn't like trying to build bridges. Like, not mm -hmm. everyone is going to be your friend, but some yeah. people will, you know. And you, and you do it enough time, cross your fingers a lot, and it, it might work out. I I can only make one guarantee, which is that if you post gifts on Twitter, I will hire you <laughs> to work at Tildra. Uh, <laughs> it worked for me. Yeah, it worked. I, for me. One hundred percent of the people in this room. Uh, <laughs> really? I mean, this is no, very small. Wait, room. I'm. I'm. Oh, sorry. This room. Yeah. I thought you meant the whole of it. Uh, <laughs> actually, actually, uh, like, I, I like Alex as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And and this is again like why I think education is like too narrow a a, a path in order to to sort of fit your your community outreach or, or whatever uh mm -hmm. i don't know some of the best tweet threads deep dives whatever that have come out of deal drive were like could have been engineering posts uh mm -hmm. or, or you know could have been talking about like i don't know they could have been linkedin uh positioning chat i don't know how to say that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but like yeah if you're doing if you're doing cool work and there's a low 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 barrier to sharing that and if you can make that low low barriers just like not offensively shitty but like charmingly <laughs> shitty charmingly uh, shitty then you know that might have like, to be the title of this thing yeah like and then yeah. go for it like uh no, and if it doesn't work that's fine it was a tweet it was like who matter. cares i just delete my tweets that don't get many likes on my personal account <laughs> you, you lose those <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This is reminding me of something that I heard that was really profound. Um, it was an interview between uh, Chris Thiele and Ben, Fol ben Folds. Of um, the five, yeah. Of the five, yes. And uh, I think Chris said something to the effect of art is getting up on stage, rehearsed, and just breathing. And we don't <laughs> do enough of that. 
Like, and I think, you know, so much of this conversation just brought that back to mind, this idea of we're, we're afraid to maybe embrace the art side of this, which is to have that communication and just stand in front of people and just be who we are and like breathe and show the work that we've been creating along the way. And that may be a little abstract, but like, I I do think there's something very, there's something very there. Like people want to, they want to like admire and celebrate like hard achievements and you know and and we don't allow them to a lot of the times because we want to like just polish it up so much that it like barely even resembles who we are anymore and that's that's a shame i'd like to see more of the stuff that that you all are doing and like the the progress that you're showing you know i have, like I have a phrase normalize sharing scrappy fiddles <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's just you know. Well, we can win. I'm not even. I'm in itself is a scrappy fiddle of a of a of a maxim. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I'm sorry. Your point. You put it better. I think you put it better. You know, if it was too perfect, that it wouldn't. It wouldn't have that. You know, wouldn't exactly draw people in. There is a sort of like. You have to be willing to sort of die on stage in order to get on stage type of thing, right? Mm. Uh, I don't know. I think that there is a sort of a professional trust that, of course, doesn't really exist on on something like Twitter, right? But, like, uh, you can, like, pretend it does, which is you just trust that, like, you're not the only person who's ever had a bug or that has mm-hmm. ever like struggled with a piece of mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, user experience or implementation or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Like I just presume everyone's super like tied up in terms of their, uh, uh, or like buttoned up in terms of their, their, their lives. <laughs> right, right. Like I also presume the best, you know, like that, uh, uh, that, you know, like you're, you're, you're descending to share your, your bug with me, but everything else is going fine. You know? Uh, and so it's like, no one, no one cares. No, one, like you can, you can, uh, you share your work, scrappy, scrappy fiddles or otherwise. Uh, it's just, yeah. You got it. You hooked him. <laughs> I think give, giving an opportunity for that professional sympathy is the, the yeah, kind yeah. of that studio visit moment or something like that. Like, uh, yep, yeah, yep, 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 been there. Been there. Something like that, yeah. you know. And then when you do have something to celebrate, now you have people to celebrate it yeah. with. Yeah. And uh, the sort of the victory lap kind of stuff that we were doing in November with like Make Real yeah. really felt earned in yeah. a way yeah. that uh, mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't have if it had just come out. So many people were commenting like, hey, I followed Teal Draw before they were cool, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was there when Steve was battling arrows on his own. <laughs> someone, someone shared my, like, GitHub um, activity block to say, like, you know, oh, yeah, he's, yeah, been, yeah. he's been grinding for years on <laughs> this thing. Actually, it's an angel investor, so I can't make fun of him. Uh, no, but it was great. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, it's awesome. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun to see you. I love that. Well, I think that's a great place to end. I think that everything you've talked about, like that, that art, the community, like feel like I can feel it. And I'm glad that we got a chance to talk about it because it feels different. It feels unique and um, warm in a way that is uncommon. And so um, thanks for sharing everything with me today. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I'm glad you could join as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're making uh, pretty good uh... Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Where can uh, people find y'all? And, um, you know, if they want to follow along in your personal journeys um, or also like Teal Draw. Uh, Teal Draw, you can follow at x.com slash Teal Draw. Uh, and of course, <laughs> tealdraw.com for the, the app. And if you're into, uh, if you're a developer, we're on GitHub. Um, GitHub.com slash Teal Draw slash Teal Draw is the, is the repo for the, um, the SDK. I have a blog at steveruiz.me. Hmm. You have a blog. Yeah, toadpond.com, baby. Toadpond.com. T-O-D-E pond.com. Yep. And uh, on YouTube as well. Oh, yeah, YouTube. I forgot about that. Toadpond. On Toadpond YouTube. on YouTube. And then I'm on Twitter at Steve Ruiz OK. OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> wait thanks so much y'all this was uh absolutely fabulous thanks for uh thanks for sharing everything that you're doing it's, it, it's been great to watch and uh great to learn more right now so thanks awesome. see you, Thank you see you out there huh <laughs> yeah thanks man.